All right, YouTube, we're going to play some uh, Drake's Day without a Goblin Electromancer. This is my favorite version of the deck. Um, it hasn't, it's drifted off and not as popular as the Electromancer version, but I feel like as the format moves to Niv decks, that the Niv decks are going to be able to start to go over the top of these blue red decks. And I think you just want to be aggressive. You want like your eight Drakes, your dive downs. You don't want the Electromancer because you just want to be able to churn through your deck quickly. Um, not to mention this deck, it's got an edge in the mirror because these crash throughs make combat so much better than you. These Warlord of, Warlord's Furies mean that your drakes can attack into their drakes and they, you, you know, they just get eaten by theirs or you just eat their drakes. So we're just going to run a league with this deck. This is my preferred version of the deck. It's not as popular, but I am a big fan of it. So let's go. No Electro Drakes. And let's jump in. <clears throat> well, let me throw the deck list up here. I hope everyone watching has a good Thanksgiving. I know I'm really excited for that. Man, this, the standard leagues have been. I guess it's the night before Thanksgiving. Only degenerate, sir. Still playing magic at this time. <clears throat> Make sure my stream decker is updated. Yep. We're all loaded up. Jeez, it's taking a while. So yeah, I like, I think that the metagame is going to move towards like, it's going to get like more Nivy. And if you, if it's getting more Niv, you have to kill them before Niv comes down. And I think the best way to do that is just with eight drakes and dive down. Just being aggressive, sticking a threat, and then just killing them with it. Yeah, this hand's pretty solid. We have a Lava Coil. Couple can trips. I think it's an isolated chapel. Um, we don't know what we're looking for yet, so I'm just gonna warlord sphere here, just to fill up the graveyard. Get our drakes big. I guess we could want to hit land drops with our ops, so maybe I should have held that. Ooh, we're playing against Esper. Esper is not. This is not a good matchup because it's a deck that just has. Uh, Dive down, it's got like exile removal, which is just going to be tough for us to beat. But we're going to get this Phoenix into the graveyard with a tormenting voice so they can't counter it. Missed the land, said they have a search. Okay, so now we need a land pretty bad here. On the bottom. Oh, no, no. Shoot. I didn't see this crash through. Whoops a daisy. So now we're going to lead on crash through. And we're going to lead on this op because we need to hit a land drop here. All right, put on top. We need we need one more land drop. Okay, I'm just gonna continue to cycle here, set my draws up. If they take this Arclight Phoenix out, we're still gaining value with a Vraska's Contempt because we got it back for free. Yeah, no, it was just chemistry and setting. Okay. Hey there, Gen Gen Stuckoff, Gen Stuckoff. Hope you're having a good night. Seal away, sure. So 
So I'm just going to jam this Phoenix. I don't really care if they counter it. As long as it's not like a syncopate. Yeah, there's a syncopate tail. They ditch the settle. Okay. So let's chart a course. Then I can go chart a course into Enigma Drake. Jeez. Should I go like this? Play this Drake. And pass. We're looking for a dive down. We got another counter spell. Now we're going to flash that back here. Let's see if they hit another sick fate. Okay, we have a threat on the board. Could get Teferi into oblivion here. Okay. I'm going to start with this because if we hit a Phoenix, geez, we're getting a lot of reach. Okay, so let's go get an island. Then we'll just pass. Likely we should have gotten a red land. We need to hit like a dive down because my opponent's about to just like put this game a little too far out of reach. <laughs> Gotta hope this works out here. Wow, resolved. All right, we're gonna hold that. This search is just gonna get us here. All right, that's not bad. Let's say I have another answer to this. Okay, they're just gonna jump start two cards. So they have a sinister sabotage. Is one of their cards in hand. Jeez. That's scary. Uh, they're playing with. I need to draw a dive down. Come on. Tilt. This thing's just going to beat me. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we just we can't beat this thing. Because this thing is just gonna like hit all of our creatures for the rest of the game. What a beating. We got wrecked there. We did draw a lot of useless cards, but we did get destroyed. So we want spell pierce. Want Beacon Bolt, want Blink and Search. We don't want Shock. We don't want Lava Coil. There's definitely a chance that we want another Beacon Bolt, but I'm going to make them show me something to use it on first. Like it's, I think it's only Chromium. <clears throat> so, Phil's, I don't know what Phil's got going on, Tannen. Like, he, so he had this issue kind of growing up, I guess. We got him in February. And once in, when he turned four months old in April, we started taking him to the dog park. Oh, this hand's kind of slow. I'm going to mulligan. Uh, we'll keep this one. We started taking him to the dog park, and he would like, go to the dog park for the day and he would come back and have like a limp. Uh, we're going to keep that. He'd have a limp like like it looked like, a, like a, a kid that went to a sports practice or something like that and was just beat up. And then all of a sudden uh, we're just going to get this chart of course off here. We, we don't need to ditch a phoenix more than likely. Gross. It's probably just this blink. Um, 
Then he, wow, that's some awkward mana base action there. Let's ditch this. Then we, we took him to go get x-rays and uh, we took him to go get x-rays and they found out that all of his bones were good. What did they keep? And so we had his knees checked and everything. They thinking that he might have joint infections. So we got him on some medicine now. We're going to see how that goes. So we can get a Phoenix back into play here. But I kind of just want to jam a Phoenix while I don't have counter magic up. I could also just jam this Drake. I could really like step on him here. I was a luxuating patella. Never heard of that. Now I'm. Uh, we want put this on top. I'm just gonna play another Drake. Just crack him here. But yeah, it's just like we're nervous that he's got joint problems, and if he's got joint problems, then then he's gonna be. If he's got joint infections, that's something that he could theoretically die from. So we're just a little nervous. We're going to, like, we got him on some medication now. We're going to see how uh, things work going in the future here a little bit. And then um, I'm both just dead if they don't have an answer for this. Because, like, they put the op in the graveyard, grows my uh, drakes, and then the phoenix kills them. Because, like, the CDC had something a couple years ago where they talked about joint taps with dogs. So. Okay, Luxury Patel. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, we're just going to hit the same 60. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just worried about it. So, he's on medicine now. Yeah, I mean... We got him on some medicine. When the medicine runs out, we're going to see if the joint issues come back. And if they come back, we're going to have to go get a, a joint tap, which is when they take fluid out of the dog's joints to then see if there's an infection in there. Uh, so I think this is unfortunately kind of one of the hands this deck. Like, if you want to play this deck, you've got to keep kind of these kind of hands. Like we have three one mana can drips. If we hit a land, we're in good shape. But my opponent's mana base seems pretty ambitious. We land here and we're good. We're putting the Phoenix in the yard. We got the tormenting voice going on. Okay, we can play magic. It's gonna suck if they counter my tormenting voice. Like I always hate that playing against control decks. They can just like sinister set. They can just syncopate your. Well, it's not gonna happen now, which is nice. Didn't hit a land. Gas. If we hit a land, we can likely get a Phoenix in play next turn. Profane Possession is big game, though. All right, we need a land. Nice. We need another land. Oh, that's such a gross land to get. I think I'm actually going to bend this. That's, that's a tough way to look at it, Teddy. God, I think I'm going to bottom this. Like, that land specifically is just so bad. Even though it gets us closer to Niv. Yeah, it's tough. I think at this point, I could just bounce this processions in my opponent's upkeep. This Niv seems like a pipe dream at this point. I could also just like bounce my own Phoenix. No, I think I'm just going to bounce this thing on their upkeep. It's 
So my opponent is such an awkward mana situation. They might just not have a fifth land. So I think we're just going to get aggressive. I'm just going to spell pierce this. So their hands, their hand, their lands are so weird. So I'm going to change the subject. Yeah, that's. I would. All right. So now we're going to get the beating. Get a beat up here. All right. So we hit a dive down, which is a nice option here. We're probably going to have to bounce this at some point here because they're just going to keep exiling my creatures. So maybe I was supposed to just bounce it and not run this thing into that. Let's go here. Okay, put this on top. I'm just gonna bounce this with kicker. And we're just gonna cast that so that we can one shot them with this Drake. Move this sweet dive down back up. Hopefully they don't have a counter spell. If this resolves, we should be in good shape. Because it's just going to be so clunky to kill it. I want to try this out for a test spell. Nice. Well, I didn't really do that much. So let's go here. Oh, I should have played my land. Player on Sick of Fate. Now I'm going to get Sick of Fate. God damn it. Oh, that's so bad. Now it's going to be a tough game to win because I, I tossed it. I'm going to jam some big ugly thing here. All right. The problem with this is they can just do it twice. So I need to present like two threats and my blink's already gone. Or set up some turn where I bring back like a million phoenixes. All right, or have another dive down. All right, come on. All right. Oh, shoot. That's how this works. I, I completely zoned out on this detection tower. Duh. Gross. I don't think I can beat this thing going long now. No, I just completely zoned out on this detection tower. This thing's just going to grind us into the dust. How can you play a detection tower in an Esper mana base? Like for real. But it still says that it has hexproof. Oh, it says it can be the target. It still has hexproof. Yeah. I'm not going to win this game. This is just a, like almost impossible to come back from. Detection Tower Esper Control. Thought Eraser, you got it. This Detection Tower wasn't there. We had him. Maybe this Thought Eraser would have messed things up because they could have gone like Thought Eraser. Then we go dive down and they kill in response. How do I win? 
I don't have maximized velocity in my deck. So it's like I have to sandbag until I have two threats. We've already exiled a Phoenix. Yeah, we're just... We're dead. I could sit here and play this out, but I want to play more games. I don't really have any cool Thanksgiving traditions, Teddy. Like, we're just kind of doing it as it is. Like, this is the first year I haven't had Thanksgiving with family in a long time. This is annoying. In fact, we lost to just a detection tower and a three-color mana base. Then we just ham and turkey. Nice. Lost to, oh my god, detection tower out of a three-color mana base. Just no way. That is wild. <clears throat> 10 man, which are like Phoenix 16 because the most staying power in modern. I don't know. I haven't played any of them. I would assume the one that Ross Miriam played is when I look at it, I think that it is better. It is a worse game one deck than the Bedlam Reveler versions, but it is better at sidestepping inside our uh, graveyard eight, which is a really big aspect of modern right now. So I think Ross Miriam's deck is pretty solid. Oh yeah, that'll do it. Okay, playing as mono red. Um, we're just gonna probably shock this. So let's get this into play tapped. And then we're going to shock this, jam an Enigma Drake. Likely you'll get killed. Actually, I'm just going to take this now and then shock this thing. Like this Lava Runner is not that scary right now. you got to fill your graveyard up, Teddy. Like you just got to run the one mana cantrips out there a little bit in this version. Because like they aren't very good, so you, you gotta get this, you gotta get this Enigma Drake to get thick. All right, likely you're just gonna go. Let's look here. We land, so we can Crackling Drake next turn. All right, put on top. I'm gonna hold this. Oh, what are we doing here? I'm going to hold this Tormenting Voice. But I am just going to deal with this thing before it gets out of control and crack my opponent. I could just crash through, crack for five. Yeah, I'm going to do that. We don't have a Phoenix yet. Like, let's make it five. Next turn, another five, and then it's lethal on the board. Yeah, it's like, dude, you can frenzy till the cows come home. Yeah, but I think it's bad to hold up shock against most of the format. Um, it doesn't really make any difference whether this is... I guess if it's 6, if we deal 12 here, then one of them is lethal. A phoenix is lethal. Yeah, so let's just do this. Put on the bottom. Okay, so Phoenix is lethal next turn. Or so Phoenix is not lethal next turn. I did my math wrong. No, it is. We're good. Are you saying it was free to hold up shock like I could opt as well? Because like if I could go shock or opt, then yeah, then I should have done that. But I think if it's just shock or not do anything, then I think it's good to just get the guaranteed cantrip in to start growing and making getting these drakes big. So against this deck, I like this. I kind of like the spell pierces, and 
I actually don't really like the fiery cannonade against mono red. Uh, Beacon bolt's kind of slow out of the main deck. Um, dive down's a little too slow on the draw. Like it's tough to set something like that up. So I'm gonna cut two of those. Bring in this because this can hit uh, frenzy, and it's kind of like dive down, so, but it's like a dive down that can hit a frenzy. Then lava coil is just gonna remove the spell. We should get the deck list of my opponent, my first round opponent from the last match. It would have just been nice to see that list to figure out what they were doing. Because they had one mana cantrips, but they also had Nib and Ral main deck. Got them all in this, unfortunately. I will keep this in the island. Okay. All right, so we're just going to do this, get this in the graveyard. Because we could hold up opt, but like holding up opt on our main phase only punishes us. I guess if we hit a, could hit a lava coil. So we, we're going to feel stupid if we hit a lava coil here. So that was probably a mistake. Okay. Yeah, I should have, I should I did this wrong. It was not good. All right, now I gotta think. I probably should chart a course. Or I should tormenting voice. Pitch this dive down. Hit a warlord's fury. And you hit a Drake, or oh, we are dead as a doorknob. We're likely dead as a doorknob. All right, what is this? This is three. Three, five, six. So now it's seven. Yeah. Thanks, Jim, again. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've enjoyed the last couple nights. I've been going, going out a little bit. i got to figure out what I'm doing for the MV anyways. It's the old turn four. Got turn four. That was a beating. <clears throat> okay. Oh, uh, we're just going to keep this same. We could, like, Fiery Candidate. There are like draws where Fiery Candidate is good against them, and then there are draws when it's not. It doesn't kill the 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't very close at all. But maybe these these crackling drinks are better than play. I'm gonna cut one. Let's bring one of these in. We're gonna help the Enigma Drake and Arc Light Phoenix take me home. Probably should have cut one on the draw last game as well. Uh, this hand is pretty solid. It kind of sucks that this comes into play tapped, but such is life.
All right, so we still cannot bring back a phoenix next turn, but we can go like kill kill. Which I kind of like doing. I kind of like just shocking this. We have to shock to kill. Like it's gonna, that thing's going to do two damage to us anyways. All right, chain gang. All right, here we go. So we're gonna go to eleven. Oh, that's gross. Hits my arc light phoenix as well. Okay. We want that. Oh, I don't think I'm blocking this. I'm stupid. I should I should cast this cast this here. Okay, because I need if I can find a way to loot a phoenix into my graveyard, then that'll be pretty solid. Alright. Lava coiled. I don't think we're gonna win this race. I do not think we're going to win this race. We're going to hold this Warlord's Fury, I think. I should hope they're kind of running on nothing. The problem is they can just go like Chain Whirler, attack. We block with Firebrand. So now I'm just going to go. This means we're likely dead as a doorknob, but. And we are getting beat up in this league. Yep. Beats. We played two pretty close matches here. We just kind of been on the bad. I guess this game wasn't super close. Maybe I should have mulliganed my first hand because it didn't have a Drake. We just played two solid matches there. We just wound up in the wrong, just barely in the wrong end of each of them. <coughs> All right, I would like to play first. Seems a little slow, but I don't think I'm gonna ship it. I'm gonna play a mountain first. I want to try another version of this deck that plays like uh, Yuya Watanabe's from the Pro Tour that helps split the Drakes a little more. Oh. See these thought erasure decks. I don't think these thought erasure decks have hit the hit the meta game yet. But if they're a part of Moto, like I keep getting beat up by these thought erasure decks. Moto Thoughtseize bug. 
I'm gonna ditch my beacon bolt. Yep, ditch my beacon bolts. I think I'm just going to jam this Drake. Just put another threat into play. Keep the pressure going. If they kill one of these, then at least I've got to dive down for the other one. But we could just get Eldest Reborn to the moon. We get nicked. We're going to need this dive down. Come on, Spell. Well, that's going to get me over Nick. I guess I should have just beacon bolted Nicol Bolas, but I know it wasn't big enough. Yeah. I should have left my land in play, but they could just like disinformation campaign me. Eldest Reborn, that's not good. We're going to ditch the Enigma Drake because we don't want them to draw a card if they reanimate. All right, come on. Come on. We're just going to town here. All right, well, a lot of damage. We had to keep casting them because we're just going to have to ditch into the Eldest Reborn anyways. And at least now they're at the point where, like, Top deck drakes or, or top deck uh, phoenixes are, aren't lethal, but they're scary. Okay. Would have been nice to less attack there, but. That likely wasn't going to happen. Uh, okay. All right, so they're going to get back. Oh, they're just going to get back Nick. Then they're going to flip Nick anyways. Man. I keep getting worked by these. Now, just show me a land. A land? I should have thought. I, mean, I made a bad play there, but. Yeah, we're good. Because they're just going to flip Nick, and then I, I can't win after they flip Nicky. Dang. Might be a short lead. Because we are getting worked. We can beat the F up here tonight. Something cool about what's going on in Moto right now is that I can stream basically any modern deck right now. All the modern cards are super, super cheap. The standard's so good. All right, I want this. I don't want my shocks. I want this. I want this. We'll just cut our lava coils and try to beat over the top of a Nick. Because like by the time that Nick is actually killing me when they flip it, I can't win anyways. So I'll just take my take them taking a the card and just try to like Warlord's Fury over the top of it, make it so they can't trade. Can't eat a creature at least.
Actually, I'll look up lists from the Grand Prix also to keep trying here. Alright, that's pretty solid. So let's keep this. Got a lead on Steam Vents. Alright, let's do this now. I wouldn't mind hitting lands. So they're going to take my charter course. Oh, gross. Well, now they're going to take search. I guess either's not that bad. I see a lot of cards otherwise. I should have just waited. Because I was like, I, I kind of just wanted to hit lands. Like, I'm not going to bottom a search. Because, like, this charter course might do some work for me. In a nutshell, I probably just shouldn't have casted my op there. Like, that was loose. It was loosey goosey. I'm going to be pumped if I get the Spell Pierce, a disinformation campaign here. Or an Eldest Reborn. Basically, I'm going to be pumped if I can Spell Pierce anything. I'm just gonna play Lango. We will play Lango until I can play this Crackling Drake with good backup. I'm just gonna let this go. It's a land. Like I don't want. I really don't want to let a, whatever it is resolve. Play a land that makes so I can still spell pierce something. Alright. It's a good draw. I thought erasure here is really gonna suck. That sucks as well. They missed the land drop. I really don't think I can just jam Niv without any kind of protection. Because Niv's all I got at the current moment. Yeah, they have a counter. They're gonna, they're gonna negate my charter course. This also kind of insulates me against the Eldest Reborn. Should spell pierce this. Because we've got, again, we've got the Eldest Reborn covered. So now I'm just going to jam this Niv. We're going to get at least two cards out of it. If we don't tap, then we're going to go nuts. Okay. We're likely going to get that back next turn. We're probably going to kill our opponents next turn. Going to be 100% above the rim here. Yeah, my opponent's super dead. I 
which we just didn't get Elvis Reborn. That's how we won the game. Good old scoop face coming here. What's going on there, pal? Gotcha. Catch this. Upstairs. Upstairs. Uh, I guess I just chart a course again. Because then if they cast a spell, I don't know how they could lose here, but we don't we just want to make sure that because because like after that charter course resolves, if they cast a spell, they die. So like anyway, this can go haywire. That's how it stops. Hopefully, we can start out quick and get this game too. That would be sweet. Get a little confidence going. If you didn't beat up a little bit. Gosh, I'm about to call this league guys for three matches. I'm getting tired. It's 11.15. Start streaming about three hours ago. Yeah, we'll keep this. Do cantrips into more cantrips into, you know, cards that are going to help us make up Getting ground out a little bit. Shadow is not looking passable. I'm tired. I had a moment of nostalgia today where I wanted to play the Jun deck. If you want to spell curse this, go for it, dude. Okay. Get another counter spell, my friend. Um, I kind of want to ditch this tormenting voice because if my opponent starts to land on like mana, this tormenting voice is just going to be so bad if it gets countered. I really don't want that to happen. through this turn. Nick's going to be annoying right here. Search, you got it. All right. I will I'll play my own search. I don't want to jam the Crackling Drakes until I can get one more blue mana. So I can counter a Eldritch Reborn or just. That's bad. This thing is thick. T H I C. Nice thing is we can first strike through it. We get enough cantrips in the graveyard, which we need more. That's dangerous. What are they digging for here? 
Well, blood operative. You gonna pay a three life? That seems. Okay, they did. They kept a card on top. No, they ditched the spell pierce. They put two in the graveyard. Well, oh, man, this seems sketchy. For our opponent to do this. So they kept two on top there. So this is actually going to let our search flip. Wild. All right, there's blood operative. Our search is not going to flip, sad. Nice thing here is actually we can crash in with this Crackling Drake because of this Warlord's Fury. And now we have to... Oh, it doesn't matter because of the Exile. Hmm. Alright, what do we got here? Yeah, toss that. That's not bad. Let's save that though. Cast this. <coughs> I assume my opponent blocks this. I would advise them to. This is nice. The nice part about the underrated part about the Red cantrips, they do help you in combat so much. Whoa. Another Doom Whisperer. Some Baraska's Contempt. Okay. You got it. It's going to end up being a tight one. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, that should be game. Got a way to kill this Drake, bud? All right, keep going. I got the fire. And that's like, it would have been interesting to see, like, um, if that's what I like. I mean, that's just what I like about this version. It just gets under him. I'm actually exhausted. I think we're going to call it here, actually. I will tweet out the results of this here. But. Let me go back to the deck. We can just chat about it like we're closing up. Shop. Um, again, I like this version of this deck. I like it better than the regular, like, no Enigma Drake version here. So I think I think you want to be playing a Enigma Drake. Enigma Drake's great in the mirror. It's just great against the control decks. It's a blocker against the aggro decks. I think it's a very good... I think it's where you want to be. So... But I appreciate everybody for showing up and hanging out. If you're on YouTube, head on over to my Twitch page, hit the follow button. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, vice versa. I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving. Um, I won't be back tomorrow night, but we'll likely be back uh, this weekend.
So we'll see all of you guys later and hope everyone has a good rest of their night.